Hi guys, I got a set of th uh, three remote 433 megahertz switches over here and I got these from a friend of mine who just bought them knowing that I would be interested. So that's great, isn't it? And these are Elro FA500S switches and they are sold as a kit with three switches in one box and one remote. Three switches, uh, four buttons, it's kind of odd. Um, but these switches are self-learning. The first 10 seconds they are plugged into an outlet. So let's see. Um, I've removed all codes uh, from them uh, before. Uh, so they should be blank. Blanking, uh, flashing, flashing. So um, that means it's in learning mode. So when I just press C, it turns on and off and that's it. So that's good uh, from a consumer's perspective. I plug another one in. It's a learning mode. Press D, goes on, off and that's it. So see that one off and on. So, but the, these are actually great because when I pull it out, wait a couple of seconds, then press the C. Now both of them switch on because this one went in learning mode, but it didn't forget this preview setting. So when I press the D button, it still goes on. So you can make all kinds of groups of lighting and, and all kinds of setups with these switches. And, and that's actually, that's great. Um, both are turn off, I can turn off D then, uh, yeah. So th this, is, this is actually really nice. Um, I couldn't do that with um, the older style switches, which I have got over here. This one, um, this one was previously sold uh, by the Action. And it's not uh, programmable by, by self-learning, it's just, uh, it, it has dip switches. Um, then this is remote, which has also dip switches. And uh, I've written under uh, a, digit, a digit called 30 and B, so this one is programmed at position 30D, uh, which is actually handy for my Raspberry Pi. So, let's see. These are the dip switches. And the first five of these are for the system code, and the other five are for the receiver code, and which is uh, currently set at um, B, and B is just the second position, C is third, uh, etc. So, but the system code actually is um, a little harder, and the first one is turned off, all the other ones are on. So, w when I need to get to 30, I need to start counting binary. So, the first one is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 1 is off, 2, 4, 8 and 16 are on. So 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, yeah, is 30. So this one is actually programmed at position 30B. And I'm not going to change it because I just removed it from one of my other lamps. Um, so <laughs> why not do this? Turn these on, put this on top, and yeah, this one <laughs> is in position 31, actually. So what I'm going to do, turn the one off, so 31 minus 1 is 30 again, and it's set at position B. So there we go. That's how the older style switches work, I'll put it back because... Uh, I want, don't want to mess up the, all the codes which uh, of, of, of all the switches I got here in my man cave. So put these aside and guess what I did? I cracked one open. I guess you didn't guess that. Um, so from a consumer's perspective, these are better, uh, programmable, uh, and as I've been told, uh, there are four types of controls with all four different codes and. Yeah, uh, I don't know exactly uh, why uh, why there are four types of uh, remotes because I cannot actually cannot find a setting in there, not a dip switch or something. Put these out before a little screw just drops in one of the holes, or just get it out of the way first. <coughs> okay. 
there. And there we are. Um, this is all. Crystal, two resistors and an LED. And some capacitors, resistors and a brain box. <laughs> and um, I believe it's, of course, it's uh, anonymous. It has doesn't have any writing on it, so I cannot find a data sheet for it or anything. So, but do I see any switches or anything which makes these configurable? No. There's a marking on here, fourteen thirty. Yeah. So. I guess when you buy another set, it's you just have to hope that it is another controller. I don't, I don't know how this works, and uh, maybe if you guys do, uh, let me know because I'm planning on buying more of these. Now I know how to program it with my Raspberry. I'm going to show you in a, in a couple of seconds. Um, put it back together. Um, Maybe the correct way around is a better IT. Yeah. And the last screw was just sitting in. So here's power again. I left them on while powering off, well, well powered off. Um, so they do not turn back on immediately. Um, these ones do, but these ones do not. So uh, it's they are in learning mode right now. So when I press the C, they will both learn the new code C. Uh, so I will have to wait a couple of seconds for them to go in normal operation. And um, yeah, so. This one does have some kind of setting, uh, it's just a potential meter over here, and that's all there is. Uh, but let's see, they're, they're normal operation right now, C turns both of them on, D only turns this one on. Um, so the remote still works, and uh, this one, it has a fairly simple setup, it's a capacitive dropper circuit. Um, yeah, inverse limiting resistor, smoothing capacitor, uh, discharge resistors are two uh, SMD resistors, a bridge rectifier, anonymous chip, um, one chip, the HD002. Uh, I could not find a da data sheet for it, um, but I guess my guess would be that these two are memory chips for, for the settings because this one uh, is the only IC over here, uh, which is a power regulator, power amplifier actually, and it's an LM3, mm, 3, <laughs> I'll have to look at, there's a little bit of light over here, LM358, so um, I guess one of these or both are memory ICs, um, and but this circuit, uh, they've made some attempts for some proper separation, it's okay, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this is, since it, these do not come directly from China, but through a European uh, seller, they should be okay, right? So um, one giant, not gi not giant, one is just the largest component on the board, uh, the, the relay and the fuse, and it's a 24 volt. Um, uh, 12, 24 volt, did I say that correct? 24 volt a DC um, relay, uh, all drawn uh, from the capacitor, a capacitor dropper circuit, I guess. And so, yeah, um, let's see if I can actually 
get them to work with my Raspberry Pi. So, um, my PC is over here, so I'm going to turn these off and wait a couple of seconds and put them in learning mode. Let's see the remotes here. So now I'm that's a um, a button sent to these. So it's not the rem the same remote control because th this one is responding to this remote only. So when I send a off signal with my Raspberry Pi, these turn only this one turns off. So I can turn them back both on and off. So <coughs> actually, it was uh, a little hard to uh, find the correct codes uh, for these one because the older style Elro switches. Um, have all different kinds of codes, so they do not work uh, anymore with the wiring pi software written for these. So I, um, yeah, was looking on the internet and I found the pilight.org website, uh, which has a nice wiki page uh, which supplies all the different code for codes for all the different remotes and, and switches for these FA500S switches. I put a link in the description. So I installed the pilight. Uh, software uh, by uh, adding the PyLight repository to the repository list of the uh, um, Raspberry Raspbian uh, operating system, updated it, uh, added, uh, installed the PyLight software, and that's it. Now I've only had to add the code of my GPIO pin, which is in my case pin number 15. Uh, added it to the uh, uh, config.json file and, and that's it. Now I'm sending these codes uh, which I found on the website and these just started working. It was it was hard to find but when I found it it was fairly easy. So that's how they work. I put uh, some more information in the description about how to configure these uh, because the documentation of the PyLite uh, website is not that great actually but it, it's okay. I've all found it all there, but I had to read the entire documentation. Um, yeah, so th that's how the new style Elro switches work. And they are great. I'm going to buy more of these uh, for probably about 8 to 10 euros per three switches. So that's it. And thanks for watching.